One of the things that I found out that was sort of amazing about your history, you, you briefly mentioned it right before we started, you were a Marxist at one time in your life. Most people will find this hard to believe, but it is true. But it's not that unusual. Uh, most of the, the leading conservative thinkers of our time, time uh, did not start off as conservative. You had a couple like uh, Bill Buckley and uh, George Will. But I mean, Milton Friedman was, was, a, was a liberal and a Keynesian. Uh, Hayek was a socialist. Ronald Reagan was so far left, at one point the FBI was following him. You know, uh, so, uh, so there's a huge movement uh, from the left to the right as people get older. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware, as I mentioned to you earlier, as a former progressive, I, I understand that, that movement in the yeah. modern sense. Do you, do you remember sort of what you were thinking, what appealed to you at that time about Marxism? Yes, I mean, there was no alternative being discussed. Uh, my first job was as a Western Union messenger. And uh, I would come home on some nights, I would take the Fifth Avenue bus, which cost all of 15 cents in those days. <laughs> But I figured I'd splurge now and then. And I would drive, it would go all the way up Fifth Avenue, past all these Lord and Taylor and uh, all these fancy uh, places. And then I would cross 57th Street, past Carnegie Hall, and down Riverside Drive, and that was the, the, sort of the Gold Coast area. And then the, as I came across this long viaduct in, that turned into 135th Street, suddenly there were the tenements. And I wondered, why is this? I mean, it's so, it's, so, it's so different. And, and nothing in the schools or in most of the books uh, seemed to deal with that. And Marx dealt with that. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like winning an election when there's only one person running. So then what was your wake up to what was wrong with that line of thinking? Uh, facts. <laughs> well, you know, we could probably end the interview right there. Yeah, facts, there yeah, you and, go. And, yeah. and specifically, my first uh, professional job, I was a... Uh, uh, summer intern at the U.S. Department of Labor. And I realized from dealing with these people that the U.S. Department of Labor, one of my biggest concerns was about minimum wages. It mm -hmm. has been for a long time. And so my, 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 at first I thought, well, this is good because all these people are poor and they'll get a little higher income. And so that, that'll, that'll be helpful. And then uh, as I studied economics, I began to see, well, there's a downside. They may lose their jobs completely. So it was, that's, that is that. And so I tried, I, when I was at the Labor Department, I tried to uh, t talk about that to them. And eventually I came up with some test of it. And uh, uh, when I came up with this test, how we might test this, I was waiting to hear congratulations. You see, that I had this. <laughs> and I could see these people were stunned. They said, oh, this, this idiot has stumbled on something that will ruin us all. Wow. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I realized the U.S. Department of Labor had its uh, own agenda and interests. Uh, and that did necess not necessarily mean that, that whether poor people lost their jobs from minimum wages or got higher pay was their highest priority. Yeah, how much longer did you last at the department? No, that, that, no, that was really the turning point. Yeah. And then I began to see that all these government agencies and whatnot, they have their own institutional incentives. And uh, you cannot say that the government will step in and do the, what's right for these people and whatnot because they'll do what's right for themselves. 